Good morning. Time right now is 8.30, and this is the WLBB Community Voice here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3, streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. And I encourage you to go to the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page this morning to uh, see the entire program there, and feel free to uh, ask questions or suggest, make suggestions during... Um, uh, during this program, again, on News Talk 1330 WLBB, I again am Colin Worthington. My guests this morning are with Solid Solutions. Sitting to my right, Ernest Kaufman. Sitting to my left, Tree uh, T. Stibling. Stribling. Tree T. Stribling. There's an R in there somewhere. And, uh, gentlemen, I appreciate you coming in this morning. Third time we've had them on the program as we discuss about their, uh, their proposal to bring a landfill and industrial park into Harrelson County. And then, uh, unless you've been... Uh, living under a rock, you're aware. Well, even if you are living under a rock, I'm sure you've heard about this uh, going on in the community. Uh, most recently, last month, the Harrelson County Planning Commission they recommended that the Harrelson County uh, commissioners deny a rezoning request from Solid Solutions for a proposed municipal solid waste facility and light industrial park. Mm-hmm. That project does require a rezoning from ag to industrial on approximately uh, 2,000 acres of land in the area of Interstate 20 and Georgia Highway 100. Uh, the actual decision, though, regarding the rezoning request will be made by the Harrelson County Board of Commissioners and possibly, I believe, as soon as uh, March the 1st is uh, when that is expected to be made. Um, you know, in, in this, when I wrote this, I said it requires uh, rezoning from ag to industrial on approximately 2,000 acres. But does it really require, do you guys have to rezone that entire 2,000 to industrial? Is that necessary for this project? Because the landfill itself is uh, right. much smaller than that 2,000. But do you have to do that? You know, what you have here, first off, you've got the industrial park that has to be zoned industrial. You have the landfill, of course, itself uh, has to be zoned industrial. You've got the piece that's uh, 167 acres. It's up north on on Front Zone Golf Course Road. And that piece is zoned industrial, and it can be both either recreational or industrial uh, up there. And then you have the vast majority of the rest of it, uh, you know, we're going to have as what we uh, need for soil borrow areas, or a lot of it is going to be in soil borrow areas, which means that you'll have a, a small track of land that will go in and, and get the soil off of it for daily cover. And then we'll, when we get through with that particular area, it'll be reclaimed just like it was when we took it and so we'll be replanting we'll be replanting trees or or replanting glass or in some of the bigger ones we may actually uh, do a lake there but yes uh, there there is a need for that obviously people would try and make it out that well you're just doing that to expand the landfill and And that's why i ask him because yeah and we've gone through that over and over and over and over that you know you have natural barriers that are not going to let you expand that landfill and we don't need to expand the landfill. We have plenty of airspace, uh, you know, <laughs> to do what we're doing. We don't need it, that expansion. And we couldn't, you couldn't get it if you tried to because of the natural buffers. How many solid waste um, uh, facilities have you guys put together? Or at least, uh, I bet you understand, how many have you worked with putting together? Uh, six five or six greenfield sites Mm -hmm. and then operated um you know our our former company that i founded we operated facilities in uh, kansas new mexico guam uh north um colorado well i don't know if new mexico or Guam would have the same um, uh, transition or, or, or experience what you have to go through to get this to happen. But is it par for the course then that the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission recommended that the Board of Commissioners deny that rezoning? Colin, in every one of these that are Greenfield projects, you have to go for a Planning Commission, okay? I've never had a Planning Commission recommend one of these projects. What the Planning Commission did was fully expected by us. It's what we consider to be normal. And... You know that's just that's just the nature of the beast. So we went in there expecting exactly what would happen, and and that's exactly what happened. So you're not discouraged by that, even with the turnout, um, not at all. And the comments made. I want to go over some of the things that were presented yeah. by them mm-hmm. during that session. There was an attorney during the planning and zoning hearing that alleged in 2021 
there were two separate groundwater tests near the Merriweather location, and that's one that you guys do talk a lot about. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, go look at this one. This is one we're mm-hmm. proud of. Um, it happened in May and August. Again, this is alleged. I, I don't know. Sure. Um, groundwater wells had tested positive for volatile organic compounds mm-hmm. on those two occasions. Um, right. You know, VOCs are responsible for the odor of scents and perfumes as well as pollutants. Um, some VOCs are dangerous to human health or cause harm to the environment. Um, the, the allegation that, that those well water was tested like that, um, you know, what do you say to that? Was that? Is that accurate? That's what they said. Uh, you know, apparently they had a detection there from what we know. Uh, what's important is that the system worked. The system did exactly what it was supposed to do. It detected that. It detected it right up next to the landfill, not on somebody else's yeah. property, not 200 yards from the landfill. But the system worked. The s- detections were reported to the state, and the state and they are going through a process of, f- of deciding what it is, which it could be a number of things, and how to deal with it. Some, some of these would, could be very simple. Uh, it does not nec- it does not mean that there's some catastrophe going on down there. Far from it. It it shows that the system works, right? That's what's really really important uh, because it shows that it was contained on site. Uh, it shows that it was it was picked up. It shows that the regulation works. Uh, these are highly regulated facilities, uh, and and frankly, that's just proof uh, proof that uh, the regulation of them works. Um, the Georgia Regional Commission, they had predicted that by 2025, when, when this is planned to be open, mm-hmm. if approved, that 416 trips per day would come in. I mean, I know you guys have your own numbers. I don't know if they're, they're similar to that. I don't remember. We, we've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Um, 42 vehicles per hour. Um, right. I, sure. That's vehicles that are coming off of a federally funded inter- interstate onto a state-funded highway directly onto our private road that's 500 yards or a little less than 500 yards off the interstate. Uh, the results of the traffic study show no impacts. Uh, so... Uh, frankly, that, that's really. But even with that much traffic, I think that's you know the. Oh, but Colin, but there's that's you know, basically 250 yards off the after you turn off the interstate, you're going to be in a deceleration lane. Okay, that those trucks will be in. They won't be out on 100. They'll be in a deceleration lane. They're not passing any schools, churches, houses. Not passing anything. Yeah. And so, you know, to say that it's going to create all this big traffic jam is a little bit disingenuous because it's not. Yeah. And, a, and DOT, you know, that's why we have to go to DOT and get the approvals of designs. And that's why you have deceleration lanes and why you have acceleration lanes so that you don't hold up traffic on 100. T and I talked a little bit before you got here about the size of um, Tally Mountain. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it being considered a landmark in right. Harrelson County, but there was the suggestion during um, during that hearing from the opposition that the landfill uh, is actually taller than Tally Mountain, and they suggested numbers fifteen one thousand five hundred twenty two feet for um, the landfill, and then fourteen hundred feet for uh, uh, Tally Mountain. They compared those and suggested that you've got that backwards. Is that backwards? Okay. Yeah, yeah. The the Tally Mountains going to be over 100 feet taller than the peak elevation of the landfill uh so that's a considerable height difference uh and um what's important to note is that that the highest point of the landfill will be some point way off in the future uh and it's going to be a gradually sloped hill it's going to really really match the terrain of the surrounding area which is all general gentle rolling hills uh so aesthetically it'll look very similar to the surrounding landscape uh, and and frankly, Tally Mountain provides just a significant buffer uh, for the whole area uh, in terms of its ability to match the surrounding terrain. T. Stribling and Ernest Kaufman are guests on this morning's Community Voice program, both with Solid Solutions and have a uh, proposal for landfill um, in Harrelson County. Uh, before we do take our first break, it, this may be a simple question and a simple answer. I don't know. How do you guys know? How did you find out there is a you know a need? To move trash i mean is it, is it just given that eventually you're going to need it did you guys know that there's somebody who you're going to work with you immediately 
I mean, how, how did you guys determine? How do you determine this? Sure, just- the need. Well, if you if you look at the disposal map for the oh. area, you can see that there is a <clears throat> pocket and a hole of disposal capacity in this area of Georgia. Uh, there is um, there's obviously the landfill that's in Polk <clears throat> County, uh, and its airspace is rapidly decreasing. Uh, and other than that, there's really no other major private landfill uh, in this whole region here uh, Mm -hmm. that services it. So we saw the need for this area in particular. Uh, There's a need for all of North Georgia as well. Uh, But in particular, there's a need in this in this part of the state. You know, Colin, here's the thing. You know, you had somebody in the meeting stand up and say there was 26,000 years of airspace in Georgia. We, you know, we have to deal with the facts, okay? We don't, we can't spin doctor things, okay? We can't make up things because everything we do is going to be in front of four or five judges before we finally get a permit. So we don't have the luxury of doing that. We would not, I mean, common sense tells you that we would not be spending millions of dollars to build a facility that there was no need for. I mean, think about that a second. And we've already spent probably six and going to spend 25 or 30 before we even open. And you think that some uh, people would do that before if there was no need? I mean, that's the same thing that we hear every one of these facilities I've permitted. You know, you could almost go down a list, and everything you're hearing here is everything that you hear everywhere else. And the opposition thing is to throw everything they can up against the wall to get a lot of confusion a lot of mistrust, and a lot of spin doctoring of the facts. We don't have that luxury. What we report, what our studies are, are facts by highly qualified people, companies, scientists. It's not, we don't have the luxury of just making up stuff or spin doctoring stuff. Well, knowing what business you guys are in, I mean, do right. governments come to you and say, hey, we're going to need a place in about 10 years to send our stuff to so go find us something? No. I mean, then how do you decide who's going to bring it? How do we know? How do you find out who's going to bring it from where it's going to come eventually? Well, we we do an extensive evaluation of any markets that we look at. If you look, you don't find us going into, you know, small markets. Generally, our solid wastes are all in large metropolitan markets. Cause, and if you look, the disposal is all either on one side of that market or – the disposal is uh, decreasing fast uh, and not keeping up the ability to dispose, not keeping up with the growth. And so, you know, we put a lot of time in understanding a market before we ever even go looking. Right. It just doesn't happen that we decide, oh, let's just spend the next five years over here on west of Atlanta and spend a whole bunch of money trying to do a landfill. That uh, and doesn't find out later if there's a need for it, right? Mm-hmm. And, well, <laughs> and and you can't you can't just site a landfill anywhere either, right? You realize that. I mean, there's we went through it with the planning commission that our criteria is far more stringent than the criteria set forth from the state because of all the buffers <laughs> that we put in the project, uh, as well as the criteria, frankly, that's in this local ordinance. Uh, and so when you when you start taking that into consideration. These sites do select themselves, uh, and that is a big part of it. <clears throat> well, you did you did allude to the fact you're not going to invest all this money, you know, you know if you're not going to if it's not going to be successful. And business no is business. I mean, mm-hmm. and there's going to be a landfill somewhere. Um, but when you see these people come out and speak, and when they speak out their concerns, you know, when they're concerned about their livelihood or their uh, or their health, I mean, and you see and, that does and, that not? And listen, we're you just as concerned about that too, Colin, because we don't want again to come out of here with a bunch of lawsuits after we're opened up. That's okay. When you look at the remoteness of this site, how few people live within a mile of this site, and all the efforts that we've gone by acquiring this huge amount of property and limiting it to 300 acres and doing all the noise studies and all the odor studies and all these other studies way ahead of when any other company would ever do them. There's not another company I know of that would do these studies prior to going and asking for zoning. But we wanted to do that because we want to make sure that our facility is one that when we go to the next project, you're not going to go back and, and talk to somebody and they say they didn't ever do what they said they were going to do or or that, you know, this thing is a disaster. Uh, 
So that's yeah. yeah. We left nothing to question with the zoning studies that we've done in the zoning application. This is really zoning applications unparalleled to any other application. Certainly submitted for this county, uh, and frankly, our engineers and uh, consultants will tell you this is the most comprehensive zoning package they've ever seen for this type of project. So that's a direct response to what we knew was going to be concerns in the community about the facility so we could honestly look them straight in the eyes and tell them this is exactly what you but can expect. I think the thing you had to focus on also was the fact that probably 80% of the people that spoke or 80% of the people we hear from, they don't want anything. Yeah. <clears throat> they don't want the industrial park. They don't want anything. They don't want any new people moving in the community. They want everything to be like it's always been. And unfortunately, in the real world, that's not the case. And so you would hope that you have companies that come in and want to do projects in your community that are committed to doing them the right way, that are committed to spending the kind of money to make sure you know what you're doing and that they have a long list of experience in what they're doing. So that's, you know, that's what we're trying. That's what we do. That's right. Time right now is 8.47. Our guest this morning, Ernest Kaufman and T. Stribling with uh, Solid Solutions, our guest on this morning's Community Voice program. Well, the other side of this argument <coughs> on the program, I believe next Thursday. Is today the uh, second? So I'm going to guess it's the 10th. All right. Next Thursday, we'll, or next, yeah, next Thursday we'll have uh, the other side of uh, this discussion. So if you tune in for that. Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. I'm Michael Flynn, Oak Mountain Academy, class of 1978. Katie Flynn, class of 2010. Justin Flynn, class of 2014. Logan Flynn, class of 2019. And I'm Marnie Flynn, current teacher at OMA. My uncle Richard Orm Flynn, a founding father of Oak Mountain Academy, had a vision to see students become confident leaders who hold a faith-based value system in an academically rigorous environment. We are proud to celebrate 60 years of fulfilling my uncle's vision. Our family invites you to visit the campus or oakmountain.us today. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Eight forty eight. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice here on News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three. Streaming live online News Talk thirteen thirty dot com. And this morning we are on the News Talk thirteen thirty WLBB Facebook page. My name is Colin Worthington. Our guests Ernest Kaufman and uh, T Stribling with Solid Solutions. If you missed any of this program, it'll be available on our website uh, shortly after it uh, concludes about nine oh two at News Talk thirteen thirty dot com. And, of course, uh, it's on Facebook this morning, so um, you can go back and watch that uh, forever. <clears throat> Again, discussing this proposal for uh, landfill and industrial park in Harrelson County. Um, are you guys aware that a local uh, state representative did present some legislation that could possibly affect this last year? Uh, last I've seen, I think it was March of last year, when it's just sitting in, uh, had second reading in the House. I suppose there's a version over in, um, in the Senate as well. Are you guys aware of that? Yes. We are and that's something, again, that every time you do one of these, you see that. That's expected. And, you know, we, we will, we're on top of that. This is, you know, solid waste is a heavily regulated industry already, and there's a tremendous <clears throat> amount of siting requirements that are already in place. Like I said uh, before we went to commercial, you can't just put a solid waste landfill wherever you want to. And there's a tremendous amount of siting requirements. And so... That was what was unique about this site was we met them all. Uh, so I think that your audience this, needs to realize that mm -hmm. it's it's already heavily, heavily regulated. And, Colin, this brings up the point, a, a very good point here, and that is that business relies on the law and ordinances that are in, the, in place, okay? We go out, industry, and spend a tremendous amount of money abiding by all those ordinances and laws and regulations Set to be able community. to be able to permit a facility and then you all of a sudden when you submit it then people want to go oh wait a minute we're going to change it or we don't want to abide by it we're going to pass a law now that says that uh, you know retroactively you can't do it 
and you know it's it's what we see unfortunately it's a sad comment on sometimes on where we are uh with with our world in general these days that you know it's a but laws are made to, to are in place and they were voted on by the very people that represent the public and they've been in place sometimes for a long time sometimes in place for just a couple of years and business relies on that i mean your business this radio station if they decided that they didn't like your towers and all of a sudden they think you need to have your towers 50 percent less in height than what they they should be then you'd probably not be upset about that Time right now is 849 Community Voice uh, program right now with Ernest Kaufman and T. Stribling with uh, Solid Solutions. The uh, previous states that you maybe uh, uh, put in um, uh, landfill and that you worked with this before, you, you said you kind of expected you've gone through this process before. Were there zoning rules the same as the state of Georgia? I mean, I think Georgia's kind of unique in that uh, it's more of a municipalities who get to make that decision ultimately, right, as far as – I don't know, they're all that way. Are they all that way? That changed, I guess, 18, 19 years ago, okay? It used to be you didn't involve the local government, mm-hmm. and you just submitted, and this is pretty much everywhere. Well, Georgia might have been one of the first ones to do that, too, right? Well, no. They were, well, they were one of a group of the first ones, yeah. Mm-hmm. But what was happen, what would happen is that, you know, you'd go to the legislature, not the legislature, but you'd go to the state, you'd submit your application, and they'd hold a public hearing, and then they'd vote on it. And so people people felt like that the local government wasn't represented, and so they passed ordinance that where you had to have local approval in one form or the other. But generally what that boils down to is you have to gap zoning. Uh, and then once that's occurred, then you can turn in your permit to the state. Now, that happened probably... 15, 16 years ago. And so all the different, you know, states passed these laws that, about how you could do things and, you know, how it was supposed to be. Local governments passed their zoning ordinances or amended their zoning ordinances, and uh, and that's where we are today. That's where that came from. And I look at it from your perspective as a business is that those, those zoning ordinances are there to, um, you know, maybe encourage business or to make sure they're going to the right place. But the other perspective is that those zoning uh, ordinances are there to protect you know quality of life or their perspective of a quality of life and, and i even and so if you meet all those zoning ordinances mm-hmm. you should be able to have your permit well, i mean we should talk about the site in general and the fact that it is we've got such tremendous compatibility of zoning we're not talking about developing a solid waste landfill right in the middle of the county we're talking about <clears> developing <throat> it right off the interstate our access road will be less than 500 yards from the exit ramp. We've got the front edge, which is an ideal location for an industrial park. Um, industry wants to be located on the interstate. And we also have compatibility with our neighbors f- for industrial use. We've got the city of Tallapoosa's industrial park that we connect to. And we got the county's old landfill and currently operating C&D landfill and transfer station just to our east. So that is remarkable compatibility of zoning. Uh, for a over two thousand acre site that's completely undeveloped, uh, and that's, that's and, and oh that's by the way, why the zoning makes sense. And oh by the way, it's hard to argue that a modern subtitled D landfill is going to be poisoning people's wells. It's going to kill people. That you're going to have odor. You're going to have this and that and something else when you're sitting right beside an old, unlined landfill that no records were kept of what went in it. You already, you know, you have two plumes that they're tracking. We're tracking. You know, it has not polluted Walker Walker Creek. It hadn't poisoned anybody's wells. Nobody's raising their hands and complaining about the garbage that's laying on the concrete up there, or from the record we find, complaining about the smell back when it was operational. And so it's hard and disingenuous to, you know, to argue that all of a sudden this facility is going to be different with all the protections and all that go in it from the old facility that's there i think something else that's in uh, the minds of harrelson county residents is nearby in fruithurst and muscadine there's uh what they're calling a, you know a, can- a cancer uh, square and it has to do with allegedly some things in, in the well water out there i mean so I'm, I'm sure that's fresh in their minds as well too mm-hmm. i mean they're very well aware that's going on next door 
Um, it hasn't really been determined what it is. I think Auburn University came in and checked it out. Um, and they weren't really able to pinpoint it, but I'm sure that's, I mean, that's something that they're feeling over there. And, you know, Colin, things were done in the 50s and 60s that are unimaginable with what people just put in the ground, okay? There wasn't any regulations. You didn't even have to check in at a scale house. You just went and dumped it. And the biggest problem is on a lot of the facilities, people say we ought to dig them all up. Well, if you dig them all up, sometimes if you dig something up, you create a bigger issue and a bigger problem than you would if you contained it and left it where it is. But those are all issues you see all across the country, uh, and in some places worse than others. And you know, you you find it, you know, because somebody's well got poisoned. And this this facility be constantly monitored, uh, just like the Meriwether facility. Right, and you see that the regulation and the monitoring, you see that it works. Well, it's just like every facility, every just solid like waste facility. Just like every modern facility. We've got about two minutes left in this program. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if you guys are the right ones to even, even ask about this, but I look at um, last night, uh, Harrelson County Board of Commissioners meeting. I mean, they, they denied a rezoning request for an events facility. No, uh, like, they tabled it. Uh, you're right. You're right. They tabled it. There, there's a lot of people that spoke out against it, and um, and everything that was spoken out was is because we've been here for generations and we don't want anything here. And, and it's a local person that was presenting it as mm-hmm. well. Um, so I mean, you know, if they have the right to deny that one, if they choose to do, you know, what's mm-hmm. what's the difference about this? Why would not they not have the right to uh, deny this landfill if they so chose? Well, Colin, you're you're assuming that this man's not going to take it to court and win. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's possible, but that's, okay. Yeah. I mean, you, they've got the right to do whatever they want mm-hmm. to, uh, legally or illegally. But you know, the, you're subject to court challenges, uh, and that's something we hope we don't do. Okay, yeah. we okay. want, as a closing statement, we want to work with the local community. We've tried and tried to reach out to get people and talk to them and take them to see, look and see. But we want to be a part of this community. Working together, we can help make sure that their fears are alleviated, that that they're a part of the process by being on the Citizens Advisory Committee that gets to look at all the records every time, they, anytime they want, and are meet monthly. But to make a facility successful, you know, you have to have involvement. And, and that's what we end up getting at the end of the day. We get involvement from the community. Right now, Unfortunately, people are so scared because they've been told a lot of things that are not true. You know, they started out with this thing going to be a 2,000-acre landfill. It's not. They started out telling everybody we're going to enter on Highway 78. We're not. You know, just on and on and on. And and so people, you know, they're scared of change to start with. And then when you add the misinformation on top of it, then you understand why you have – Large crowds. I guess I got about thirty seconds. How much money do you expect to make in this project? <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> Colin, you know that's. Um, yeah, I'm not really quite sure. It, I don't even know that we we would have an accurate projection of that. But that does. That's not. That should never be a decision of if you're going to give zoning or something. Well, how much money did well, they sure, ask? But, but it's something people want. But did, you, did I mean, they ask Honda how much money they were going to make in that facility? No. I mean, no. They, yeah. Or the Goodyear yeah. over there? Mm-hmm. No. Or auto plant like Kia? No. Have you guys made any promises to anybody um, on any uh, local boards as far as what will happen if they would approve this? No. No. And, yeah. I, and I'm also, you know, they they love to talk about that the commissioners are already bought off. Right. Sure. And or that we're giving. Right. So, okay. Yeah. And they need to quit that because if they got proof of it, we if they don't have gas money and can't get the attorney general's office, we will take them there. Yeah. Okay. That's something we don't do. Never have, never will. Yeah. Right. Ernest, Ernest has been in this industry his entire career. I've been in this industry for a number of years, and we've built our reputation on being honest, transparent, and capable businessmen. We would. We don't need to do it. We're doing it the right way. Yeah. All right. Solid Solutions will be back on our program, I believe, later on this month, maybe in two weeks, three weeks. But we will have uh, guests on here next Thursday discussing uh, why they are opposed to this project. Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. National Head.